Hi guys, um, it's Emma Vigling with TYT Politics. Um, as you guys may know, Jordan is away. Jordan is um, still in in uh, in Cleveland for the RNC. I'm sorry, just fixing my hair. Um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, Clinton's VP pick. I was planning on doing this Facebook Live um, when she officially announced, uh, but then. Uh, <laughs> WikiLeaks coming through with these insane DNC leaks, um, these insane anti-Bernie leaks. You know, the the stuff that Jordan had been reporting on, that we'd been reporting on before, um, did show collusion. It showed, um, you know, very succinctly that they were only focusing on Hillary Clinton way in advance. Um, as the Democratic nominee, but now the DNC has released, that, or the WikiLeaks has released thousands of DNC documents, and then they just made my blood boil. I mean, they, they talk about constructing an anti-Bernie narrative. And, wondering if there's a good Bernie narrative for this story, which is that Bernie never has had his act together, that his campaign was a mess. This is from the DNC. This isn't from the RNC. This is more than collusion. This is the, this is a hit piece on your own candidate. I mean, it's unbelievable to me. Uh, and then this this was the one that got me the most because this seems like right out of a Republican playbook. They wanted to expose him as an atheist. God fucking forbid that this is from some of the DNC emails. I'll read it to you guys verbatim. It may might make no difference, but for Kentucky and. It, well, well, hold on. Uh, does he believe in God? Or for Kentucky and West Virginia, I think they mean. Can we get someone to ask his belief? Does he believe in God? He had skated on saying he has a Jewish heritage. I think I read that he is an atheist. This could make several points difference with my peeps. My Southern Baptist peeps would draw a big difference between a Jew and an atheist. This is from the DNC. I mean, it's... Look... They're saying this nomination, this nominating process is over. We, and it is. I mean, we have to suck it up and we have to allow Clinton to be the nominee. That's what they want us to. I mean, we can protest, but the, the, they're not going to, they're not going to give in at this point. But it's just like twisting the knife. And this is, in my opinion, even worse than what they said before. Because it's actually almost... It, it's it's like in 08 when the Clinton campaign released that picture of Obama with his darkened skin or when they released him in that Muslim garb. It's the dirty tricks that the Republicans should be making. We're supposed to be above that. We're supposed to be, this is supposed to be the progressive party. I mean, I don't even know who believes that anymore except for Fox News. And us crazy liberals in the Democratic wing. Oh, Hillary Clinton, how insane. But, but it, it is just unbelievable to me that, that they were able to get away with this. I, I don't even want to call it collusion. I want to call it a hit piece on Bernie Sanders within his own party. And then you had the Democratic elites crying and saying, he's not being fair to Hillary Clinton. His own party wasn't fair to him. That's what it was. They did this. They, they made sure that he wouldn't be the nominee by, by sabotaging him from the inside. Um, so I encourage you guys to all read up on, on, on the, or WikiLeaks, follow them on Twitter. The, the story is still unfolding. They've released almost 20,000 emails from the DNC. So just look into it yourself. Um, I'm sure that Jordan is going to want to be talking about this and we're going to be talking about this more extensively as this story unfolds. Um, but you know, in, in this is, I, I guarantee you the mainstream media isn't going to report on this whatsoever because they have the veep sticks which you know i'm going to be talking about but from a different angle and they have trump and his and pence and trump's speech and oh my god such drama trump called out Cruz today like oh my gosh they could actually do some real reporting and look into the fact that there has been internal sabotage of of a major presidential candidate um but but i digress um so you know, I was going to wait to talk about this. Uh, there's no official word yet. But uh, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, a lot of major outlets are reporting that Hillary Clinton is going to announce Tim Kaine as her VP today. 
Um, so this video could be all for naught if, if she doesn't pick him, but all signs are pointing to the fact that she's picking him. Um, and this paired with what we are reading about the DNC and, and from WikiLeaks, just, it, 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 it hurts me on a personal level because I watched that Republican National Convention and the racism and the xenophobia and the hurt, the, the harm that they would do to the country. And yesterday I was thinking, you know, I'm voting for her. I'm, I'm biting the bullet. I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. Um, and they, they just have to rub it in. They can't be honest. They can't take this diametrically this party that's diametrically opposed to everything the Americans care about that Trump is leading and they can't capitalize on it because they are that corrupt. So one, they sabotage their only populist, kind, honest candidate from the inside. And two, she's picking Kane as if she has any finger on the pulse of the country. You know, that's what we want. That's what we want as Americans. We want a, uh, we want a white corporatist male, that vice president. She really has her finger on the pulse of the country. We want insiders. That's what this election has been about, right? I mean, I, I don't even know. I, it's either one or two things. She thinks she has this in the bag, and she has an infinite, she's infinitely arrogant. And she thinks, I'm, it doesn't matter who I pick. I want to please my donor base because people are going to come flocking to me, even though I'm tied with Donald Trump in every national poll. Does she know how to read a graph? Does she know how to read numbers? How about a pie chart? How about a line graph? Bar graph? I don't know. What, what, what kind of graph do you need, Hillary Clinton? You're tied with him in most swing states. You're losing in a lot of swing states. And you're tied with him in most national polls. And we also have this massive outlier in Gary Johnson and Jill Stein. We don't know how much momentum they're going to gain, how many voters are going to be attracted to them. And so you being arrogant and you be thinking that you have this in the bag is, it, it's unbelievable to me. It's truly, it's an arrogance that is beyond explanation. Um, so again, you know, I did an expose on Tim Kaine. Once she officially makes this announcement, I'm going to tweet it out so you guys can all read it or listen to it um, and watch it on YouTube. But um, I just want to reiterate his top three donors in the, by industry. So he's received almost $5 million from real estate companies. That's mostly real estate developers and contractors, um, some real estate LLCs and mortgage lenders, great. Secondly, Democratic Party organizations, um, so so big uh, big DNC people. The establishment has donated like $4.5 million to him. So, um, you know, I don't think Bernie Sanders is, like his campaign was, the Senate campaign was getting $4.5 million from democratically affiliated organizations. You don't really see that uh, when 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 the guy isn't sucking up to big donors. Um, and thirdly, his third biggest industry donor are financial services with a little over $4 million. He's received $1.8 million from investment bankers, 560 k from stockbrokers, 550 k from private equity funds, 530 k from banks. You would read that and you'd think, if you, if you had no context, context, you would say... You, you would think, where is this Pat Tooney? Is this is this Tom Cotton? Is this the senator that's receiving all of these donations? Um, I mean, it's unbelievable. So 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 that's how corporatist of he is. He's and I as I said in my story, he's the the senator that was most boastful about pushing for the TPP. And just this week, um, literally two days ago, he wrote to the Fed chair Janet Yellen. He said, "quote It is unfair." To require unfair to require large banks to be uh, required to calculate and report their liquidity on a daily basis. So this guy, that while she's saying she's the progressive, she thinks she, she's saying she's the progressive. This guy's voting to or urging the the Fed chair to further deregulate or or allow for uh, loosened restrictions on on these on these banks. I mean. That, that's how arrogant she is. She thinks that no one's going to look into this. Like, we have the internet now. I mean, okay, so remember in 2008 when Obama picked Rahm Emanuel? And we were all as progressives. I mean, I was 15. I loved Barack Obama. Um, I believed in him throughout his... He was the person, I would say, besides the Young Turks, who got me into politics. And then he picked Rahm Emanuel. And progressives were pissed. And we were like, well, maybe she'll do... Maybe he'll do the right thing. 
And then he had a Democratic Senate, he had a Democratic Congress, and Ron Emanuel, the corporatist, you know, kind of pushed him to abandon the public option. And then we have we had a watered-down Affordable Care Act. At least Obama did that after he was elected. But Hillary Clinton, in her infinite hubris, goes, I'm, I don't even trust the American people to look into my vice presidential pick. They don't care. I can just spin this with my 1960s spin machine and manipulate the media and, and, and get them to believe what I want them to believe. But we have the internet. It's like, I want to shake her and say, we have the internet and you are, you are allowing for this fascist to gain all this momentum and power. Um, you know, I, I, I just can't believe her arrogance. She can't read a chart. She can't read where she stands in the polls. If this is Tim Kaine, you know, I really hope to God that, that she says, no, it's, it's going to be Elizabeth Warren. Because I know that a lot of progressives want her to stay in the Senate, and I know that a lot of progressives are angry with her um, for, what, for her non-endorsement of Bernie Sanders and what she's done. I get that. I totally get that. But she actually, she's not a traitor in the sense that she has actual, real accomplishments that she's done for, for the progressive movement. I mean, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, say what you want about, about Elizabeth Warren's non-endorsement of, of, of Bernie Sanders, but the Consumer Financial Protect Protection Bureau was a real, substantive thing that she did for the American people. And I will forever feel indebted for her for that, because no one was doing dick after the financial crash. So Elizabeth Warren was a true progressive, and if Hillary Clinton did pick her, which, which Elizabeth Warren has all but confirmed that she won't be the VP nominee, she said, I would have known by now, so, you know, we know at this point. Um, that would have singled, signaled to me that the rhetoric that she's done to appease Bernie Sanders voters was more than just lip service. Um, but now we have these DNC leaks, and we have, we have this unbelievably arrogant pick um, of this corporatist uh, that's pending. I believe it's going to be him for by all reports. And it's just infuriating that I can't, you know, I was watching that Republican National Convention last night thinking these guys have got to be stopped. And she had a real opportunity. The DNC and her had a real opportunity to actually stop this person. But they're that bought. They're that arrogant. And that's all I really have to say. Um... I, I will keep you guys updated. Follow me on Twitter at Emma Vigeland um, to to see the updates on the on the VP pick and on the WikiLeaks story. Um, I will be retweeting out my analysis of uh, of of Tim Kaine and his donors, um, which has more detail than this broadcast um, at you know, later in the day if it's official. Um, and yeah, uh, keep keep chugging along, guys. The progressive movement doesn't die, even though the Democrats are fucking incompetent. Um, and more to come on this story. Bye.